This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to you, declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, very important, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to Scripture. He is buried. He rose again the third day, according to Scripture. Thank God. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Send me to heal the broken heart. Preach the deliverance to the captives. Come a sight to the mind. Send the liberty. Them that are bruised. Thank God. For the thy thee, and in your heart and your mouth is a word of faith, which I preach, you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has blessed you from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believe it, by the righteousness, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed. The gospel of Christ is the power of God and the salvation. Everyone that believe it, the Jew verse, also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just to live by his faith. Thank God. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and other devices. Welcome. Terry Bell, seated to my left. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Doyle. Amen. As all watch this broadcast, know that Terry and Kathy D are on with me each day, at least for now. We don't know what God will do next, but that's what we're doing. I am. So we started obeying God in 97. When he told me to sell 121 Veterinary Hospital. And do what, I, what he said, and I did. It was a struggle, difficult, but I did exactly what he told me. He showed me in John 15 that a perching was coming. And Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, verse 14, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Right. Purge my conscience from dead works to serve the living God. In other words, if you believe the Bible, as I do, you cannot serve God and them your conscience is burned. Oh, look, I can't help it if you're wrong. I just believe the Bible and that for many years. Our conscience is full of dead works. Whatsoever is not faith is sin. We find that in Romans 14, 23, I think it is. Whatsoever is not faith is sin. My goodness, we all live in sin. If we don't walk by faith, we're living, walking in sin. The church is full of sin, of doubt. I'm an apostle, prophet of Jesus Christ, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. 
about my choice. That's certain. But God's choice. Amen. So, purging your conscience from dead works comes by the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, ministered by the Spirit of God, mixed with faith, amen, prayer out of my heart, Acts 26, to open your eyes, journey from darkness to light, journey, journey from the power of Satan to God, minister forgiveness to you, uh, your sins be forgiven. Takes faith. My faith. May I make a comment here? Sure. Uh, you have said to me that it takes someone who has had their conscience purged in order to deal with another person by the Spirit to purge their conscience. No question. Why? Well, if your conscience is full of dead works, you don't have anything to minister to anybody. You can't even minister to yourself. So God dealt with my conscience early, first, from that work. I was shocked. I was a veterinarian, a successful one. Shocked that medicine could be witchcraft, or sorcery, or the same. I saw this in my studies. I was a good friend of Derek Prince. I said to Derek, do you believe that medicine is witchcraft? And he looked at me, just smiled. He wouldn't touch it. Their prince wouldn't touch it. Well, I knew what the Bible said. Church got some definitions, and I want her to tell us what they are. The word witchcraft in Galatians 5.20. Right. Uh, that word in the Greek is pharmakia, right. which means uh, medication or pharmacy, the administering of drugs, sorcery, magic arts, often in connection with idolatry. But it's all related to medication and drugs, the use, the use of or, or um, applying of drugs. By and, using them or prescribing them. Right. Distributing them. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did it all. <laughs> and that word is uh, um, witchcraft in Galatians 5.20. It's the same, same Greek word in Revelation 18.23, um, translated sorceries in English. Also, Revelation 9.21, sorceries. And uh, that same root word from which pharmakia comes from, pharmakias, is also, that word is sorcery in Revelation 21, 8. Amen. Well, I was a shocked man. Very shocked. One day I was reading Acts 19, where they brought all of their books about curious arts and burned them. I think about 50,000 pieces of silver. They burned books. As I was reading that the Lord certainly sent to me my medical books were curious art. Oh, I couldn't believe that. Curious art? 
I knew they were. Look, I got a pretty good intellect. I'm a start. I get along with any intellectuals. You don't bother me. You don't threaten me. Thank God I knew what God said to me was true. Six weeks later, I was putting a small two-by-two two, uh, ceiling light in the hallway. And you know, I could do about any kind of building I want to do. And the thing almost slipped out of my hand, and I went like that to stop it. Bingo, the edge of that light right across my wrist. Oh, what a fun day. I looked at it. I could see the nerve. I could see the artery. I could see the blood, the vein. The only bleeding was capillary bleeding. But I could tell that tendon right there was severed. Oh, immediately I said to the Lord, okay, how did Satan get in? Your books. I told you. They were curious art. I said, all right. I got off the ladder. I said to Pat, she said, Devin, get the car. Let's go to McKinney, Dr. Sims' office. Jerry Sims, a good friend of mine. He went to heaven not too long ago. Hey, Amen. went to his office. I was laughing. Dr. Sam said to Pat, what's he on? She said, nothing. He thought I was on drugs. I've been, I tried to kill myself, slicing my wrist. I said, Jerry, cut it. You know I'm not that kind. Suture this thing out. Doyle, you've destroyed your wrist. What are you talking about? I've got to get a specialist. Oh, come on. Put some sutures in it. I was a veterinarian. I knew what I was doing. A whole lot did I know what I was doing. I'd also been Hospital Corbin, U.S. Navy, four years, spent 27 months as a senior corpsman in emergency services. All kinds of accidents, you name it. Thank God. I've been around a lot of physicians, worked with them, a lot of people are injured, Dying, so forth. But Dr. Sims said, no, no well. So I was in bed. I wanted out. And what was funny, this surgeon, uh, he was a specialist, called in, Dr. Sims called him in, and I heard him talking out in the hallway. And I heard Jerry say, to this guy, did you know this guy, according to the lab report, has perfect health? Everything the lab says is perfect. Well, of course, what's wrong with you? 
Anyway, they kept me in the hospital at night, made some money off of me. God. So I put, they put a half cast on with an ace bandage, and I'd change it, loosen it. Uh, about the third day, I said, this thing's healed. This thing is healed. I started putting tile in the ceiling. We were doing a renovation. Thirteen days. On the 14th, I had to go back to have a cast put on it. Good Lord, that thing, my hand, looked like an elephant's foot. Looked like I had elephantiasis. I walked out of Dr. Simpson's office. I was one upset ex-vet preacher, servant of God. I said, Lord, what is this cast doing on my arm? He wasn't answering. Three times, I had to go to Denton on some business. Pat, Terry, Kathy, by, and I went. We decided to have dinner and then and I had this Terrible looking cast, Dr. Sims in heaven, so he won't know about this. Glory, I love that guy. Great friend. And I was sitting there eating or getting ready to eat, and I saw that uh, Plaster Paris had an end that was sticking up. And the Lord said, You ought to obey. God and not man. You ought to obey God and not man. You ought to obey God and not man. I said, excuse me. I went to the men's room. Started teasing that thing away. I got, oh, maybe two-thirds of that cast off. I went back. I couldn't get the rest. I went back to eat. They said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking this cast off my arm. What? Yeah. God said, you have to obey God, not a man. So I got home. I didn't have cast cutters, but I had some ten snips, little ones. And I cut that thing and that was the end of it. I was supposed to go back, have it taken off. Never did. Thank God. Jerry was a gentleman. He knew me. Great guy, great friend. Thank God. So, all of that came about because in 1958 the University of Missouri Columbia campus the Lord visited me and said I do not want you to be a veterinarian but I want you to be a minister of the gospel you can read about it on my website I could not obey. I went on great success, but now I got problems. August 86, about one year later, my, my arm would hurt. Well, they told me I couldn't do this. Did okay. he say you destroyed your arm and it would never be the same? My or wrist. Your wrist. Yeah. 
You'll never be the same. Ha! Huh. Well, watch me. Pick up the same weight with this one as I can with this one. But not for a year. Oh, what's that mean? Uh, 22 after. Oh, I'll finish it. One day, this thing hurt. And I was looking. Well, I got home that day after I took the cast off and started throwing my books in the dumpster. And they did, I did weep. And I was being delivered from sorcery. Witchcraft, medicine, pharmaceuticals. Thank God. But I kept Dorland's medical dictionary. I do some Latin and I do quite a bit of Greek, root, prefix, so forth. I thought I might need it. It was him. God said, throw it away. I didn't want to. But I knew I had to obey God. And that's it. I threw that thing in the trash. That dictionary. I threw them all in the trash. Wasn't very long. That pain left. Glory. I think it's time for song, don't you? I'd like to make one comment right here that might sure. help listeners. Um, it's it's very difficult. If, I mean, if you follow this ministry a long time, you may have heard this about uh, medicine being witchcraft and how Doyle got that from these words in the Bible where it says witchcraft and sorcery are from pharmacia, from which we get our word pharmacy and pharmaceuticals. But if, if you, uh, even if you've heard this a long time or for the first time, if you listen to these broadcasts where he's sharing these stories and you start feeling a little bit of a headache or a little bit of a, a nausea, something like this, or some kind of pain in your body, what's happening is the Spirit of God is setting you free from that sorcery that's in you. And this may go on for years and years. Every once in a while, even, Doyle will put a little more out of him, e even to this day. Is that correct? I mean, once in a while. It's not very often anymore. You got lots out right. years ago. Right. But occasionally, you'll have some little something come up, come out. And as you were speaking, my head was hurting a little bit, and I was having a little bit of this nauseous feeling. And the Lord said, share this. And so if you're listening and you have some of these feelings, be encouraged that God is ministering to you and getting that spirit of sorcery out of you too, or at least beginning to. Amen. Right? Are you ready? I'm ready. Terry Brown's going to do a great song. Look, the only songs we have are great ones. Ministered by the Holy Ghost, out of the arts, of God's people. This one, I love it. Turn about, day, who am I?
ministry. I want to thank him. What a blessing and honor to walk out of what I walked out of, the rebellion, when he told me not to be a veterinarian, and then walked me through this, delivered me of every bit of it. Thank God I just want to give him glory and honor. No other name but Jesus. And there's just one Father, Jehovah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to you. You know, well, you, you did not get this ministry until God proved you what? worthy. You did not get this ministry until God proved you worthy. Oh. Ten years. That's that's right. Ten years. Ten years. You had to, you walked with God, was purged, tried, proven before you got this ministry. Seventy to eighty. Right. You're right. That's amazing. It was in April 80 when he told me to come to Plano, speak to people of Plano. Right. I want to share something, too, about your, you know, your deliverance from witchcraft, uh, from medicine. You are not the type of preacher that say, don't go to the doctor. No. You have told everybody it is according to your faith. That's right. And if you can't heal a cold, don't expect to heal cancer. That's right. And you say, get you as many doctors as you can get. You're going to need them. Right. And, and, and I tell people that, that talk to me the same thing that I've heard you say. If you have to go to the doctor, you go to the doctor. And you believe the gospel when you go to the doctor. Amen. And watch how fast you get healed. Right. So what are you going to do next? <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, I could talk about from 86 to 92, I never took any medication, none. Uh, and I thought, maybe this is what we better do. I thought I was free from all the sorcery. I sure did. I didn't think I'd ever go to another position. Look, I love positions. I've had a lot of friends of mine. My goodness. And they do what they know to do. But I do what 
Jesus does. So, if you don't want, if you don't have the faith, don't be a fool. Right. Don't. Don't throw your drugs away or your glasses away unless God tells you. No, he won't tell you till you walk a lot more miles than you've walked. Thank God. But in 92, uh, October 92, I was doing by my ministry was doing great. My goodness, I had a pain on a Sunday night when I left here. And I got sicker and sicker. I'd been teaching that day on nutrition. How about you need delivered from nutrition. Look, I was a nutritionist. I balanced many rations for brood bears, bulls, weanlings, yearlings, stallions, bears, racehorses, show horses. They go request my rations had a feed mill in McKinney. What was it called? What? It was what? Dr. Davidson's? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. His recommended rations for these classes of horses. Right. I got nothing out of it. I didn't want anything. I I didn't get a cut. I'll never forget the man that owned the feed mill, a great friend of mine, Bob Wallace. I'm sure Bob's with Jesus. I can believe that. I sure do. But anyway, I was talking on nutrition and telling you how goofy it can be. I got pains. And the following a week after that Sunday, one week, I had a program air on television. Medicine is witchcraft. Dallas. That time I forgot how many stations I was on. Enough. <laughs> so, pain, oh God. It got worse and worse. I prayed. I did everything I could. I couldn't stop it. Finally, I think it was Thursday evening. I remember. I'm not positive. I think it's close. But I, I think it was Tuesday. It might have been Monday. Anyway, I was on the floor on my knees, crawling in pain, vomiting, bile. It looked terrible what was coming out of me. I said, Lord, I can't, I can't make it. If I don't go to the hospital, and get this thing attended to, I'm sure I'm going to die. And the Lord just blew me away. He said, that would be acceptable. That would be acceptable. I called Ralph and Terry. Bye. I said, get up here. 
They came, took me to the hospital. They were all waiting on me. They all knew me. Called Memorial. Everybody was ready to receive me. Finally, Dr. Sims came. He's reading a lab report, all that. Gabe said, you just got here in time to live. I said, I didn't come up here to die. Cut this thing out. I know this is an appendicitis, and I think it's ruptured. And next thing I do, I would sleep. When I woke up, thank God. Amen. I was in the hospital. It was not fun. Not one bit of fun. Out of the days of gastric to me before. I don't know how many days. It was hard. I was in good shape then now. I couldn't walk that IV nasal gastric tube catheter. So I said to my physician, I'm going to get up and I'm going to run in place. And I do that three or four times a day, about 30 minutes. And that's how the intestinal, GI tract, intestinal tract, finally began to handle function. Power of God. Amen. Power of God. Oh. I was had a rubber sheet, hot, sweat, goodness sakes. <clears throat> oh, I got out the day Bill Clinton was elected. <laughs> All right, I said. Today we have Ahab and Jezebel in office. Thank God. Three weeks after I got out of the hospital, and the symptoms all reoccur. I called all my staff, said I want to meet you in the fellowship ball. They came. I said, look, got the same symptoms and when I went in. I'm not going back. I'm not going back at all. I'm believing the gospel. I'm believing God. And I'll tell you what. It wasn't many hours I started overcoming all the pain at sorcery, at witchcraft, that ruptured my appendix, trying to kill me. I was being delivered from it, thank God. Guess what? That was November 92. And that's, yeah, November. And I overcame it all. No, I've never taken one pharmaceutical, not one, not an aspirin, nothing. Never been to a position. Got one that took it, all the sickness out of my bits. Amen. Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Those were 
trying things. Oh, I still have trying things. But not, <laughs> not, not along those lines. So, what have you got? What do you have to say? Well, um, I'd like to talk about Jesus if you'd let me. Well, go for it. All right. You and I had a conversation Sunday afternoon that really blessed me. And God opened my eyes even further. You had told, uh, you, we were talking about the verse in Galatians 2. Right. I'm going to go there, if you don't mind. No, let's go. Okay, Galatians uh, verse 5, I mean, chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Oh. Faith which worketh by love. And you and I were talking about this, and I never saw until Sunday afternoon, that's exactly how Jesus walked. Yes. If we, if we go to the Amplified, I love the way the Amplified says this. It says, for if we are in Christ Jesus... <laughs> Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. And, and that's talking about the law, too, that goes with circumcision. But only faith activated and expressed and working through love. Through love. Right. And if you go to 1 John 5, verse 2 and 3, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Amen. We had dinner one night with a, with a minister. And he said, well, you have the word of God, but why can't you preach it in love? Right. He didn't know what love was. It says right here, you know, God is love. Right. It says, by this we know that we love the children of God. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Right. Now, Jesus walked that same way. If you will go with me to John 15, 10, we know that Jesus came to earth as a man. We know that as in, according to Philippians 2, he gave up all his ability, all his godly ability Amen. to become a man like us. Amen. And he had to walk like us. He did not have his godly ability when he was on the earth. He walked like a man. And here in John 15, verse 10, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. You want Jesus to love you? Obey his commandments. But look at what he says next. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus had to abide in the love of the father. Absolutely. Is there something going on with you? Just overcoming people's witchcrafts gotcha. and sins that they've persecuted my soul with. The enemies, but they're putting their sins on that. And you can read it in Psalm 143. And my faith is rising with the gospel, power of God, pushing those sins out of my soul. Thank God. Amen. That's what's going on. All right. Then I'll go ahead and continue. Jesus said, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Do you know Jesus had to obey the father? Absolutely. He was a man like you and I. And listen to that, to stay in his father's love, to stay in it. You think of all the people that God was going to love no matter what. It had been his own begotten son. But Jesus said, I had to stay in my father's love by keeping his commandments. Amen. What was his commandments? One of them. Turn with me to John 10. It's an amazing commandment from the Father to his Son. Amen. Verse 18. Uh, let's start in 17. Therefore does my Father love me. Therefore does my Father love me. Why does the Father love me? Isn't it amazing that God's love does have conditions? It, yeah. does, it is conditional. Right. It does have conditions. It says, therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. That's authority, privilege. I have the authority to, take, to lay it down and I have the authority to take it again. This commandment, this commandment have I received of my father. Amen. Jesus had a commandment of the father to lay down his life 
and take it up again. But you know what, folks? Jesus was a man. <clears throat> he did not have the power to raise himself from the dead. Why? Because he was a man. Can you raise yourself from the dead? You're a man. Jesus was a man. He couldn't do it because he was a man. Then how did Jesus get raised from the dead? There's a hint. And if you will go with me to Psalm 16. Amen. I was going to go in another direction. God said no here. Thank God. Dole and I read this this morning. All right, Psalm 16. This is Jesus speaking. And you know that because uh, Peter talks about it in Acts 2. He said Psalm 16 has to do with Jesus, that it was Jesus speaking out of the mouth of David as a prophet. Amen. It says, 9, Therefore is my heart glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Let's right. go back to verse 8. That helps. I have set the Lord, Jehovah, always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. He said, therefore is my heart glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh, my flesh, me being a man, shall also rest in hope. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Do you hear that? Thou will not leave Amen. my soul in hell. Jesus said, thou will not leave my soul in hell. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to get myself out of hell. Jesus Amen. said, thou will not leave my soul in hell. How is he speaking? He's speaking by faith. That Amen. is faith talking. Jesus didn't have the ability, the power to get himself out of hell. He had the faith to. Amen. And where did he get that faith? In the love of the Father. Amen. What does Galatians 2 say? It says, faith which worketh by love. He stayed in the Father's commandments. He did obey the Father even to the point of death, as it says in Philippians 2. He obeyed the Father, and that obedience got him the faith to get out of hell. Thank God. That's where our faith comes from. It comes from obeying the Word. It comes from obeying the Father. It comes from the Gospel comes from obeying that gospel. Amen. And it says, Thou will not leave my soul in hell, and neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. That body of Jesus never saw corruption when it was in the grave. Why? Because it was in faith. It had the faith that Jesus was coming back. It had the faith that the Father was going to go get him. And if you read in Acts 2, it said the Father raised him from the dead. In fact, it says it in about six or seven places in the New Testament that the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus didn't come out on his own. The Father raised him from the dead. And why? Because Jesus had faith which worked by love, which was keeping his Father's commandments. Amen. Amen. So? We have 40, uh, it's 1148. We have 12 minutes left. 12, thank God, hallelujah, thank you, Father, blessed be the name. Thank you, Father. I don't have anything, you? No. All right, no other name, no other, no other name than heaven, whereby one must be saved. Just one, Amen. Jesus Christ of that. Just one, no other. Just Jesus. You've got the faith. God put it in your heart. For you that must be born again, must be saved. It's a must. Think the name Jesus. After me and be saved, be born again. Jesus, 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 God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972 578 8082. That's 972 Five seven eight eight zero eight two, or write Doyle Davidson Post Office Box eight six one three two seven, Plano Texas seven five zero eight six. That's Doyle Davidson. 
Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.